Yeah, so much. If I if I just think back to like my first uh, year playing football and like the influence my parents had, like I had the parents that were literally at every single game, like in between games would just be feeding us Gatorade, water, uh, grapes, all that. And uh, I remember my dad actually, he was he was always super into it. And like literally in the middle of the game, if you know, if I needed to, if I wasn't showing that effort, if I wasn't showing intensity, if I wasn't doing something, he literally like over years developed like hand signs. So <laughs> if he if he saw me out there loafing in like second grade, he would do one of these. I mean like turn it up. If I needed to hit hit harder, he'd do one of these. Like it, man, it was hilarious. But just like thinking back over the years, like I think years of constant support and you know, getting that ingrained in my brain and that the idea of always giving effort, always looking to hit somebody. I think that, you know, finally started sticking in high school. I would say after my freshman year, I think the biggest um, frustration I had that year is I was putting in the effort, but I literally um, didn't feel like the results were showing. I, like I said, I was still kind of that awkward kid going into my body. And, you know, that kind of off season, my freshman going into my sophomore year is where I re re kind of saw the biggest gains, I think, of my life. Um, like I said, I played running back the years before, so I, I was new to the linebacker, but I knew to be a linebacker, I would have to, you know, run faster, you know, get bigger and things like that. And so kind of that off season, I really kind of dived into everything. Like I was telling you, I even read um, a decent amount of stack articles and just, you know, trying to find an edge and to get bigger, to get stronger. Um, kind of give you like a idea of it. My freshman year, I actually played, I was on our freshman team and we had like, if you were on a one or a two, you're on the B team. And so I was actually on that B team. Like that's how, you know, kind of awkward I was and still trying to, you know, get into my body. And then that off season, I made a lot of gains. And then the next season I was um, starting on varsity. That toughness, that mindset. I think that was the biggest thing for me because honestly, early on, I just wasn't tough. And I think to be a great football player, like you have to be tough. Um, there were certain things I did, you know, just to get bigger in football. I wanted to, I had a big emphasis on getting more explosive. So a lot of the movements um, were focused on explosiveness. But I think the biggest thing for me was, you know, just building toughness. I knew that um, I had a long way to go to, to be tough. And I think that's something that you can, you know, drill and, um, you know, make yourself better at. Yeah, I feel like recruiting before I started really looking at Ohio State was kind of that like stereotypical, you go on a recruiting visit, they literally tell you everything that you expect to hear. You're going to be starting the first day you get on campus, you're going to be a captain. Um, you know, we don't really, it's really not that, weightlifting is really not that hard. Like, um, you know, this is pretty, this is going to be easy, classes are going to be easy, all that. And you start hearing that and it's like, no one really stands out with that type of message. And I think, um, when I started talking to Ohio State, and I think especially Coach Mick Marotti, which he's one of my biggest mentors in my life. Basically, the biggest thing he said when I got there, he's like, dude, like, this is, this is going to be the absolute hardest years of your life. Like, training here at Ohio State's like that much different than anything you've ever done in your life. But by the time you're, in, you're out of that, you're going to be tougher. You're going to be a better football player. You're going to be a better person. And, um, you know, that stuck with me because I'm thinking like, if I were to go to the other, these other schools, I knew that I wouldn't be as good of a football player as I would if I going to Ohio State and going through some of those things that I knew knew would come out of that. So I think after that, Ohio State just stood out and it was, it was kind of obvious to me after that. That was one of the coolest experiences I think of my life. I think that was like the first experience where I guess I was able to showcase my talents and like one of those competitive style settings. I think it's the coolest thing because I mean, you're there to compete against yourself and um, a lot of those drills with 40 yard dash, shuttle, things like that. So you're training um, not just for, you know, those combine drills, but you're also competing in like one-on-ones, um, football drills. That's why I think it's so cool. I think a lot of the times, even in some of the training I've been doing is almost like, you know, I kind of miss, you know, some of that football style, the stuff we're doing, preparing for an NFL draft. And I think that's just so cool how they, um, you know, mix, you know, compete with yourself with the um, agility, the um, speed stuff, and with, with football. I think that was, I think, probably the biggest transition um, on top of training. I think the practices, like the intensity of practice was a really big transition for me because I remember my first practice, it was like everything at Ohio State. There's no, like, 
there's really no period where you're just kind of like, you know, walking around and trying to get things right. Like everything you're doing at Ohio State for literally two hours straight, like you're either sprinting to a drill and then when you get to that drill, you're sprinting in that drill. And then when you're done with that drill, maybe a quick water sip and then you're sprinting to the next drill. Like it's constant, like no one's ever just standing around in Ohio State's practice. I think that was just a big transition for me. But yeah, over the years, I think that just having that mindset of never just, like you feel weird if you're just standing around in Ohio State, like, like it's just not it's just not what we do and i think kind of that mindset is um you know why we're able to build that culture that we have and i think the bigger thing on top of that is like you said like who are the guys we're going against is um coach meyer and coach day are huge on you know competition one-on-one -on -one competition so a lot of the drills we do at ohio state are going up against you know some of the best players so i mean when when i when i look at it like the guys i go up go up against practice are gonna, probably going to be you know that much better than the guys I see Saturday, and we you know you do that continuous reps of going against the best in the nation. It's you know you, you can only get better. The biggest thing with injuries, that especially for any any younger guy that's going through injuries, um, you know the first thing I tell them is um, because I knew I knew when I was going through injuries, it was like. I feel like I was in a decent mindset, but there were some other people that were, you know, able to bring me down because, I mean, when you get injured, or at least when I was injured, I know a lot of people can relate to this, like expectations just go down so much more. So maybe um, your friends might have your expectations that much lower, your coaches, your family might have your expectations that much lower. So, I mean, when I was getting injured in my second years, I think a lot of people in my life were probably just happy for me to, you know, just get on, get a rep on, get a tackle on kickoff or something. but. You know, I it was a challenge, you know, keeping my, you know, goals is, you know, I always kept my goals of being the best linebacker in the country. You know, don't change your goals because you had a little setback. And so whatever injury you go through is just keep those same high goals that you had before and no drop off and do everything you can to get back to that point. Out of every all the accomplishments I've had, it's probably you know, number one on the list. And I think that was coming into Ohio State, like that was obviously a goal I had at the time. And then, you know, looking back at kind of all the setbacks I had, whether it was injuries, some other things, um, you know, finally get to that point of, you know, where I had this goal when I first came in, I had some setbacks and then getting back to that point of getting those, that probably the biggest goal I had when I came in was, you know, so satisfying. I think it was so emotional, even just calling my dad when, I don't know if you saw that video. And, uh, your son has been named one of the captains at Ohio State University. Hey! hey oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And he's earned it. I'm going to tell you that. He has earned it. Oh, uh, and, uh, oh. you know, that's something you know is not given out. That is an un You should be so proud. Oh, and, uh, and we're proud, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you want to, yeah, I wanted to be, I wanted you to be the first person I told. I appreciate, appreciate everything you've done for me over these years, man. Oh. How about this? This is awesome. Love you, Dad. Uh -huh. You got a great day. Love you too, sir. It's so super emotional just because, like, in the past, like, when he gets a call from, like, at the beginning of the video, he was almost like, oh, my God, like, you know, why is, why the hell is this coach calling me? Cause like in the past, like it was literally like if a coach calling him, there's probably a 50% chance. Like I just had like a season ending injury or something like that. And so like, you know, for him to finally be able to get that call and, you know, get some really good news was, you know, a really cool moment. I was super emotional. Like I could not, I couldn't, I could not stop crying that whole, like I was probably up there 10, 15 minutes talking, just whatever came to my mind just talked about you know my whole journey and I was just as real as I could be because I think a lot of the younger guys came in and they saw me at the they saw me from ever they saw me from the point what my junior year to my second senior year so I mean from that point on I was fine I wasn't really going through that much and I was able to get through a lot of those hardships a lot better than early on but what they didn't see was like the hard hard times I had like when I first got here you know I really just talked about that and I think the biggest thing was um, the biggest message I had was like, especially for a lot of guys, maybe not playing or dealing with injuries was like, I talked about how, you know, I've, I'm like obsessed with like, I still up to this day, like I've always loved football my entire life. Um, 
And I think when I started going through a lot of those things where I wasn't able to play because of injuries and other things, like I almost tried to like force myself to, you know, convince myself that I didn't, you know, love football just so I could like, you know, have a good night's sleep at night. And, you know, I was able to get by the day easier just trying to convince myself that, you know, I didn't care about it that much. And I think the biggest thing was like, you know, don't try to convince yourself you hate the things that you love just to make it easier. Like, you know, go through that pain and whatever you do, just don't lower your goals and keep at it. Thank you.